Hey all, it's Mooch. Welcome to Mining Your Mechs, episode 10, where today we test the Broadside Mods Admiral in stainless steel. And this will be the first of four Admiral tests. I have three other metals, or three other models. The brass, the copper, and a black one, which I don't know what metal it is, but I will find out before I test it. Normal setup, 60 amp power supply, set to 3.5 volts to eliminate any varying voltage, the variable of a, using a battery. Electronic load, set to 30 amps. No matter what the resistances are, resistances are uh, in the setup, this will always draw 30 amps, and then we'll measure the voltage across the posts using this meter and this solid aluminum slug, which will be inside the mod, so the current passes through the mech and back out. We read across the posts. I know the resistance of the atomizer. I know the resistance of this, and that could, with Ohm's law. 30 amps, this voltage, we can calculate the resistance of this mech itself. And I want to thank my patrons for their support, which makes this testing of these mechs possible. And let's get on to the testing. The quick thing, I don't want to do a full test, because I don't know how valuable this is going to be, but I want to just measure the tube resistance on this to compare it to the copper one. It's 25, 26 microohms. And here we're at 430 microohms, 0.431 milliohms. So that's, I don't know, what is that? 15 times, 13 times. I'll just take two measurements. 430 and 398. So, just to get rough numbers, I don't know how useful that's going to be. All right, let's look, get out of that way. And let's get the testing here. Now I always want a little bit of a gap up here so I know I'm tightening down onto the battery. If we go flush, we don't know how tight we are against the battery. So just a little bit of a gap and I know I'm engaging the battery itself. And I'm just going to check to make sure that goes to zero almost when I press the button. That's good. And now I'm going to put some grip tape on this mod. I'll be right back. Okay, we are set to run, do the first voltage drop test using the 2700 slug. We'll also use their battery adapter and an 18650 and see if there's any difference. And what we're going to do is read the voltage across here. And what I'm doing to eliminate variables of arcing is I press the button first, then I do a two second pulse at 30 amps, then let go of the button because I will do arcing tests separately later. I don't want that variability, excuse me, that variable right now. So pressing. 0.033 volts. 0.033, that's terrific. The copper was 0.026 for the uh, broadside. 0 0.033, 0 0.033, 0 0.035, slipping a little bit. 0.034. All right, so I'm going to do 0.033 four of those and a 0.034. That's incredible considering the copper was 0.026 so there's very little penalty which shows that the metal choice is not nearly as critical as the type of contacts and the button construction you have down here and using that clutch plate actually means you can go to stainless steel here and pay almost no price in terms of power loss. There was only a quarter of a watt loss at 30 amps through the copper one and this one maybe there's point I don't know less than a third of a watt. I mean, there's going to be a tiny fraction of a watt difference between the two. So that's astounding. All right, now let's see what happens if we go to the 18650. Do we still get 0.033? 0.033. Okay, and firing. Aha! <laughs> 0.031. I might have tightened this a little tighter. 0 0.032. 0 0.033. 0 0.033. 0 0.034 rounded off. 0.033. So it is the same.
at this current level at 30 amps there's no difference between 18660 and a 2700 which is what I would like to see uh, it's only a tiny piece of metal and if it's done fairly well in terms of its profile um, being able to touch things uh, like the bottom contact or whatever it ends up touching there really shouldn't be much of any kind of penalty it's a small short piece of metal it's going to have tiny resistance just a few micro ohms so it really shouldn't make a difference now the next test we're going to do is arcing and for that i have to go get the 18650 vtc 5a which i left in the charger i'll be right back okay now what we want to use is where did i put the adapter here we go bring this down first these are 2.2 ohm resistors in parallel for 0.1 ohms and I'll be able to check the current with this ammeter VTC 5A what I always use for testing arcing testing Pull that up, and I want to. Okay. And we'll just see what uh, thirty-five point three, thirty-five point zero. Okay. Now what we're going to do? I'm going to do three hundred presses. I will not subject you to that. I will just uh, do a, a jump forward. And starting with 300, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 9, 6, 9, 7, 9, 8, 9, 9, 300. Youch. Okay. And what we do now is, it's just, yeah, that's pretty hot. Take a look. A bit warm. And let's take a look. Now this operates via, same as the broadside use the clutch plate. When you press down here, these discs carry the current from that pin, which touches the battery, and presses against the side of the mod. And in the broad side, there was very little arcing. It really just looked like contact points. And I'll be checking with the magnifier here. Okay, this one, there is bits of arcing. Little tiny points spread around in three arcs. I will try to get photographs of this. But what you've got is this inside surface with a press against and in three arcs near the top the arc the not spread so this clutch plate is really only touching up along this top edge and I'm going to check the clutch plate see if I can see this no not really only a couple marks on the on the plate itself but in the inside up here I can see tiny arc marks certainly less than I've seen in some other mods but uh, you'll need to take that down you can use things like um, heavy-duty Scotch-Brite pads uh, by 3M not the just the dishwashing pads these are called quote heavy-duty unquote I've seen the number 288 used and you know take out the pin then get in there and get rid of those marks as much as possible because arcing marks beget more arcing marks uh, it's certainly not bad but certainly daily maintenance you want to get rid of the marks as much as possible and certainly more visible than i saw on the copper one and next we're going to do is thermal imaging and i will set up the camera for that i forgot to mention when i'm doing the arcing testing and pressing the button 300 times and doing the voltage drop testing where I'm firing it. It's a lot of work, especially keeping uh, even pressure on the finger, but I want to use my hands for that. I want to be able to push all over the button when I'm doing the arcing testing. I want to have the variability associated with firing this mech with a finger, because that's what would happen if we were using these mods. If I set up some automated system always firing in the same spot, we would never know whether this mod had big issues with consistency and stuff when you hit it off center. By hitting it off center, by changing pressure, by changing the contact points, we can check for something that might be of concern to vapors. Ondothermal testing.
Okay, we're back. I have the mech here wrapped in black electrical tape. That's to increase its emissivity, its ability to emit infrared radiation. Because as some of you have seen my other videos and the demonstration video I have, uh, metal really sucks at emitting infrared radiation. You want what's called a black body radiator. Something that's very good at it because that's what the cameras are calibrated for. So what we're going to do is send 30 amps through this. Now the resistance of this stainless steel admiral was very close to that of the copper broadside. So I don't expect much in the way of heating, but let's find out. This is the drip tip in my right fingers and the button in my left one. And 30 amps continuous is now flowing through the mech. And it took actually quite a while for even my fingers to do anything the last time. And just seeing if I can get my thumb. No, and I want to keep, I think I'm going to keep my thumb in the picture because I like this darker palette. It want to shift the darker a little bit better. A little easier to see the button heating. Okay, so you can see a little bit of heating down near the button on the left, but what, one or two degrees? I mean, right now, I mean, my hands are at 29 <laughs> degrees Celsius. Now, I would expect my fingers on the right touching the atomizer to maybe heat the atomizer up a little bit and there's a lot of current flowing through the atomizer itself. There's about a half watt of heat coming out of the atomizer. Alright, so we're getting just a little bit. A couple degree change. Remember, this is severe. This is 30 amps continuous. And this mech hasn't even gotten up to my body temperature yet. It's still, oh, I don't know, 3 degrees lower than my body temperature or something. And we're you know, quite a ways in, and that's good enough. I'm not going to waste everyone's time. No, I can't even feel it. And just to show you, for those of you who haven't seen it, how bad metal is, this is what happens, and you can see the warm tape it, in terms of uh, being uh, 29 degrees Celsius in the background 24. The metal itself shows you reflections, so you can see my hand in the metal. And that's what you measure the temperature of, the reflections, not of the metal itself. Whereas over here on the right, could this show up any better? Yeah, over here on the right, the tape lets you see the actual temperature. You see the atomizer is just a little bit warmer. And up here you can see the cable was a couple degrees warmer, carrying the 30 amps. And my fingers being over there, my fingers warmed up the atomizer a bit. Now the heat's starting to spread evenly through here, but where the tape has been taken off here on the left, we see just reflections. So this is incredible. This is only a little bit, tiny bit more heat than the copper one. I'd say a fraction of a watt or something. What, we are a minute of 30 amps continuous and we barely got anything more than a couple degrees? No, it feels cold. That's it for this episode. Thank you for watching.